everybody. Hey, Mr. Snowden, how are you? I'm excited about today. Ooh. Hello, Miss Moran. Good, you're doing good, Mr. Snowden, also. For everybody, had a great weekend. I'm missing my game, so pray. Hi, First Lady, Jabria, and I. Oh, hi. Hi, Janine, Jabria. Amen. Thank you, Adria. We missed you yesterday. Let me move this so I can... My neighbors are kind of noisy today. Hi, Pastor. How are you? Oh, my God. Our lives are never going to be the same. Whew, that's all I can say. It was a God-given assignment. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Love you, too. Hello, everybody. All right, I'm kind of ready. I want to have to get some things out of the way first before I um I've been forgetting and Terence if you are on um if you can help me out cuz I don't remember the address and I don't know if Steve is on, but people been asking me about how can they go back and look at the um sessions that I've done and they're on YouTube and on their Gridworks page. And I honestly don't know. I think it's for greater works. I'm not sure. But Terrence, if you're there, hello. I uh, don't know who you are. Bless seven. But hello anyway. Thank you for being on the Periscope. Give me your name so I can know who you are. Um, but um, Terrence, if you're on, if you can put the address for the uh YouTube page for the church so they can go on there and see the different sessions we have done. I need to upload the last two. Oh, hi, Leslie. Wow, first timer. <laughs> Great to have you. Okay, um, Mr. Sam, if, if um, Steve is with you, hi, Charlene. How are you? Um, haven't heard from you today. Okay, but listen, um, why don't you invite your followers? It's kind of warm today. I'm trying to keep the window closed because of the neighbors are pretty um, busy today. However, I'm missing my game, so pray for the warriors. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is more important. All right. Good, good. Hey, sissy. I pray you had a safe trip. Invite your friends. Thank you, first timer, Dr. J. Walker, I think it is. Um, go Warriors. If this is your first time, you can let us know by putting a one in, and we welcome you. We are thankful and grateful that you joined us today and we my prayer has been that God will speak to us and just give us a, a just a word a nugget that would just take us to another level amen I'm a I'm the type of teacher that I'm very uh, casual in my teaching hi Danielle amen I'm very common sense all right, so there it is. You may have to put it again. So, um, for Greater Works YouTube to watch previous teaching. Thank you. All right, so if you go on for Greater Works YouTube and then you put in for Greater Works, you'll see all the previous teaching that I've done. Amen. All right, so you can go back there and have some time. You can take notes. And But as I was saying, I'm a very common sense teacher. Um, I like to give a little bit and just God just gives me visuals. That's how he uses me. And so in the visuals, it helped heart also allow you to not only learn from hearing, but from seeing. And then when you apply it, it you'll be able to, to be more fruitful in the word. Amen. And so that's the type of teacher. Now, my husband, he's a different teacher. 
he is uh tons of scripture tons of word and it's great I take them a little bit at a time and I study them one at a time because that's how I learn. There's different type of learners. Amen. All right. So let's get started. God, we just thank you that as we come together, that revelation will come forth in the name of Jesus. And Father, let the hearer hear your word. Don't let them hear me. Let them hear your word, God. Let them hear how you will expound this word to them, how it applied to them personally in the name of Jesus. And we just decree and declare that no weapon, no assignment of the enemy will prosper today. We just thank you for insight, revelation from your word like never before that will ground us as a people that believe your word. And we just thank you and praise you right now in Jesus name. Amen. All right, so we've been talking about warfare, uh, the armor of God, and how it relates. I know it's a little bit of light, but it's hot. Um, how it relates to prayer. And this is, I think, probably my eight or nine lesson on it. So I don't want to go back through all of it. But last week, we were talking about the loin belt and how I referred the loin belt to be the written word of God. And so I want to talk a little bit about that some more because it's called the loin belt of truth. This is my review. The loin belt of truth. So where are we going to get truth from? What other truth is there than the word of God? So I don't want to get ahead of myself because when I, I know that when you look at the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, you're saying, wait a minute, there's confusion here. You're saying the loin belt is the word of God. And the Bible says that the sword of the spirit is the word, but it takes a little bit of common sense. The word, the truth of the word and the loin belt. It covers, it covers your midsection, your midsection where your spiritual mind is, where the spirit reside, amen? And that's where the word, the word of God is stored in us. A lot of time we think it all happens in our mind up here, but you know, so also with every time you, um, look at the word, the word is truth. The Bible said the word is truth. That God cannot lie. So if we're going to be putting on this loin belt, this loin belt now becomes our stabilizer. And it becomes our anchor in the word. It becomes the reservoir. That's what God gave me today when I was studying. He said that loin belt is like a reservoir for the word where the word is stored up in us. It is the written word of God that's being stored up in our spirit so that we can be skillful against the enemy. Amen. And so we talked about that. We said, what does the loin belt do? How does it affect or impact our life? And the first thing we said is that it will furnish us with righteousness. So think about it. If the loin belt is the word of God, it's going to furnish us with righteousness. It's going to tell us who we are, the right standing that we have with God and how God sees us. Because a lot of times we don't see ourselves according to the word. The second thing we talked about is what is that righteousness? Is justification, uh, 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 how we stand before God that moral rightness, correct thinking. Amen. And so all of that can be found in the word of God. So the loin belt is the written word of God. And when we go to the, the sword of the spirit, you'll understand why I say that. And then the next thing it says how the loin belt impacts our life is that it causes us to walk in peace. Again, the word. If the loin belt is impacting our life, it's going to cause the word of God. That's why I'm saying it's the written word of God. It causes us to walk in peace. When you understand the word and you stand on the word and you get the revelation from the word, you're going to walk in peace. Amen. And so the next one, we said that it helped us to walk in strong faith, strong faith. But let me back up because I need to also address something. You know, last week when we were talking about that the, the loin belt helps us to walk in peace, we also addressed the scripture 
where it said that peace is our empire. And so, you know, I was making, you know, the empire is, is the, is the, let the peace of God rule, which is mean an empire. Let it rule like an empire rules over the game. And, um, also it can be a referee because the empire, referee, whatever their names are, they make the calls. They make the decisions whether the game is win or loss by whichever team. And so my approach was that the empire or the the peace of God should rule in us and guide our lives amen with the word so we have to have that reservoir of the word and so that we can understand what does this uh peace of God does for us. Amen. You can look at, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you can look at circumstances when you're walking in peace and that circumstance will not shake you. It will not shake you. You know, as I was meditating today, you know, um, as I say, God always teaches me with visual. That's how I learn. And so I began to see myself with with this breastplate of righteousness which we're going to talk about today and I saw it like in a cartoon format and I saw this breastplate of righteousness and it had words going across it and these words was the word of God was just going across it like a marquee and so as I was looking at that you know the way God was showing me and then I saw an arrow of the enemy come and when the arrow of the enemy came if it was against the word amen whatever that word that related to whatever that armor that arrow that the enemy sent it just seems like my armor lit up with the actual word of God that was contrary to that and addressed it. In other words, it could not penetrate. I know that's just how I learned. That's how God teaches me. So anyway, as I was, as I was seeing that in the spirit, I realized that, you know, what God was really showing me is that when we are so, uh, uh, consume with the word of God, what happened is we're no longer living the word, but the Holy Spirit is living it through us. And when the Holy Spirit is living this word through us, he's our defense. Amen. Whatever the enemy will, will bring against us, that word would rise up. You know, the scripture said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Well, that's what I believe I saw in the spirit. Amen. That that enemy, when he would come in, because we're so filled with the word, you know, that breastplate of righteousness, which we're going to talk about in a few seconds, was would just address it. In other words, the spirit in us, the word that's in us, will the spirit have something to pull out of us. And so then God just started showing me, this is how, you know, I've been training you that when the attacks come, I don't even have a chance to have a pity party anymore. It seems like I don't even, even if it hits and I'm like, oh my God, where did this come from? Even though I know where it came from, but I don't even have time to think about it because the word starts flowing out of me. Because the Bible says out of our spirit will flow rivers of living water. And we can live that way, church. And, and I don't know, we just believe what the enemy is saying. So again, that's why I called the loin belt. Amen. It's the written word of God. Amen. And so when we look at, okay. When we look at the written word of God or we look at the armors, you know, God. Oh, the other thing I said was that the loin belt was the only spiritual arsenal, spiritual armor that we can actually hold. Amen. Which is the written word of God. I'm clearing up some things. All right. I went back and look at the videos and all right. It's the only spiritual armor from the armor of God that we can hold in our hand. We can't see the breastplate of righteousness, but remember I said that the loin belt, all right, the loin belt furnishes us with righteousness. Amen. And then it's, we can't see the shield of faith, but we also said that the loin belt causes us to walk in strong faith. We can't see, you know, our, our the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. We can't see the helmet of salvation, but the word talks about salvation. The preparation of the gospel is the gospel, which is the word of God. 
Amen. And then the sword of the spirit. Oh, I can't wait to get to that. But that's the last one, which is the word of God. So let's get into the breastplate. I hope that cleared up some things for you. Amen. All right. So let's get into the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. I'm excited. Now, the breastplate of righteousness, when you look at a soldier, a Roman soldier, or pictures of a Roman soldier, when you look at him, that was the first thing you saw. That breastplate. Amen. Because it was beautiful. It's shiny. It's glamorous. Amen. And I mean, it would just glisten. And so this, on a Roman soldier, this breastplate of righteousness, it covered front and back. And it would go from their neck to their knee. Amen. And it was held together at the shoulder by rings. And it protected their heart. And it protects your, your spiritual mind or, you know, it protected the main part of your body. This, this breastplate of righteousness. I just believe God is so clever that he would give us righteousness as a protection. When you think of what righteousness is, is moral rightness. It's the right behavior. It's, it's a pure conduct. It's honesty. It's virtue. And God gave us all of that. It's holiness. He gave us that to protect us. Because he knows this enemy. Amen. He knows this enemy that we're fighting. And so when you are in prayer, you have to be clothed with, with your breastplate of righteousness. Because a lot of time when we go into prayer, the enemy would try to tell us that we're not qualified to pray. That we're not the, the, the uh, worthy to pray. But when we know that God has given us this armor as part of our spiritual arsenal, we have the, the power and the authority to stand in prayer and deal with the enemy and foil his plans. Amen. And so when you think about the, the breastplate, that was the heaviest armor that a Roman soldier would wear. Think about when I shared earlier, I don't know, a few weeks ago, that Goliath, his breastplate uh, weighed 125 pounds. So let's think about how a Roman soldier, before we go in, to how that applied to our spiritual armor. Amen? And so a Roman soldier, his breastplate was made out of brass or it was made out of bronze. Either one. Most it was made out of brass. Amen. And it was comprised of little pieces of metals that looked like scales, like, you know, fish scales. That's what it looked like. And they layered on top of each other. And it says that when this armor, when, when it was worn, that these scales will rub against each other. And they would begin to luster or shine each other. <laughs> I think that is so phenomenal. Because the armor, now these little pieces of scales on the armor will start to rub each other and cause it to be shinier and brighter. Amen. And then it says that when the soldier will go out in the sun, that the sun ray will reflect on it and it would be like beams. You know how it is when you're driving in the car and 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 sun hits and you are blinded. Well, that's what happened to a Roman soldier breastplate. This thing was phenomenal. Amen. And that's how our righteousness is. It is the most phenomenal armor God has given us to protect our vital organs. Amen. And so thank you. And so then it says that the breastplate, the more you use it, the more it's enhanced, it's shinier, it's glistening. Ah. So you have to think about that now with, with our righteousness, with the breastplate of righteousness that God has given us. It says that when we walk in it and we are conscious, we, we have to be conscious of the word, the word of God, that we are walking in right standing with God and that we are right. He gave us this righteousness so that we can brightly shine in a very dark world. We're living in in a very dark world. And so if we put on this breastplate of righteousness, amen, you know, if a soldier lays his breastplate down, it just collects dust. It's not working on that process where it shines each other. 
But if the body of Christ get a hold of when we put on this armor, which is righteousness, amen, the right standing, my God, moral standing, moral fortitude that God has given us, amen. When we put this on and we and it starts, uh, uh, we start walking in it and believing it. That's the key, believing in it, amen, because you can put it on and not believe it. And, and so it is going to be a reflection of the words that we're the light of the world. So we're going to light up this world. We're going to light up this world. The, you know, God gave us this uh, breastplate of righteousness as a defensive weapon, but it also is an offensive weapon because it, a defensive weapon because it protects our vital organs, but it's also a defensive weapon because when we begin to shine as the body of Christ, we can take territory from the enemy. And that's what's happening in prayer right now. All the prayer that's being called. The body of Christ is coming into prayer arm. And now our breastplate of righteousness is shining. It's, it, it, it's impacting. Uh, the anointing of God is, is upon our life like it's never been. And so it's causing a dark world huh, to see that there's a body of Christ. There's an army of God that's risen up and it's taking its place. It's not allowing the enemy to have his way any longer. That's how we are being offensive. We're taking territory. We're taking our prayers to the enemy's gate and we're just not parking at the gate. We're going through and we're taking over. Amen. We're taking over for the 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 cost of Christ, the word, this is our right. This is the right that God has given us. It belonged to us. And so we need to get out of the timidity or, or wait thinking that, am I right? We are righteous. God gave us this armor to put on to protect our vital organs, to protect us. You, It'll be silly. Think about it. That... A Roman soldier will go out to war and don't wear his breastplate. Well, why does the believer go out to war without their breastplate? So we need this breath. Everything God God is is He's so skillful. How he gives us righteousness to protect us because he knows the enemy that we have and that this enemy would try to deceive us and make us believe that we are nobody. But God, he already knew that we are in right standing with him because of the work of the cross. Amen. And so you have to realize that you have an enemy and he's called the devil. You know, our foundation scripture in Ephesians 6, 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. We got to put on, I already break that down. I can't go through it anymore. We got to put on this armor that guides the new armor that God has given us. Amen. So that we can deal with the assaults of the enemy enemy because the enemy wants to assault us. He wants to assault us. It's his job. And so he wants you to believe that you're not righteous because you can stand against his plan in righteousness when you know who you are. But if you don't know who you are, then you won't be able to stand. And you have to think, okay, the word, the word, <laughs> the word devil in the Greek is called diabolos. Amen. And it's D-I-B-O-L-O-S, Diabolos, amen. And so that word in Greek mean, I, I want to read it. It says, one who strikes again and again and again. Look it up. Do your homework. You don't have to believe me. One who strikes again and again and again. That's the plan. Thank you. That's the plan of the enemy. To strike us again, again, and again. And then it says, finally, he penetrates the mind and emotions. That's his plan. And that's why God gave us the armor. To, to protect us from the plan of the devil. Which is to strike again and again and again and again. Until he finally penetrates our mind and emotions. Listen, he don't give up. That's the. But you know what's the greatest thing? Oh my God, I love this one. I'm going to give you a little nugget. The greatest thing is that when you are so grounded in the word of God, the word will help you outlast the enemy. 
I know it's not a nugget, but for somebody it is. If you are grounded in the word, remember I shared with you the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard every time the enemy comes in. And somebody's going to get tired first, and it better not be you. Amen? It better not be us. All right? Because the enemy wants you to believe that you are not righteous. He doesn't want you to get that revelation that we're the righteousness of Christ. Because he wants you to believe that you're no value to God and you're no value to man. And so you have to change that mindset. You have to outlast the enemy. I'm telling you, everything, every fight, every every challenge, you have, to, you have the ability. I love my dad for teaching me this, teaching us this as a young kid, that you don't lose. You keep fighting, amen, until you win. And that's that's my mindset. I, I, I don't have a give up, quit in me. I'm going to come back, amen. I may retrieve for a little bit, but I'm coming back, amen. I'm going to retrieve, get, get the word, hear what God, <coughs> excuse me, hear what God would say. And I'm back. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the reason why the enemy wants us not to believe that we're the righteousness of Christ, because when, when that happens, he has the opportunity to come against us. Excuse me. <coughs> to come against our body, our family, our finances. We, he, that's his open door. But when you're, listen, when you're the righteousness of God, you're going to rise up and say, it is written just like Jesus did. Amen. And so you have to have the word. So the enemy, he's looking to find believers who don't know their righteousness because they're easy prey. When you don't know who you are in Christ, you're easy prey. And then you're you're the seed for mind games for him. He makes you believe you're communing with, with all these thoughts that we think it's our thoughts, but really it's the thoughts of the enemy. Because any thoughts that's contrary to the word of God, it's it's a thought of the enemy. And that's why I love that visual God gave me where my blessed plate of righteousness was lit up. And it was, you know, like the marquees in New York. And all you see is words going around, going around, but it was the word of God, the word of God. And the moment the enemy will hit with something that's not against the word, it will stop at where that word is. And that's when God told me, that's when the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard. Amen. Because now we're allowing the spirit of God to function, to have freedom in us. And we, we are dead to ourselves, and given the, the spirit of Lord, the freedom and the authority. Oh my God, to deal with the enemy. I said, God, I wish I could build this thing just so I can use it as a visual the way you gave it. I don't know if you get it, but I got it. Amen. And so, you know, you have to have the breastplate of righteousness on. Many Christians who don't know that they're righteous, what happened with them? They're in habitual condemnation. They're always condemning themselves. Amen? Because you don't know who you are. Because the breastplate of righteousness, which is the right standing that God has given to us through the death of Jesus Christ. Amen? And so when you see a believer who is habitually condemning themselves, you know, think and low of themselves, they, they don't have their breastplate on. They don't, they do not have their breastplate on. They're in condemnation because they don't know the word of God that God has given to them. And we, they're not wearing their bless, breastplate of righteousness. I'm going too fast. And next thing, when you see a believer who's continually walking in guilt and, you know, same thing. They don't know who they are. And really, most of the body of Christ is in that state. And it's sad because God has given us this to protect us, to protect our heart, to protect our spirit. Amen? And so we're walking as if we have no protection, but we have an arsenal that God has given us. We have the loin belt, which is the written word. In other words, we have to get our reservoir filled. Our reservoir must be filled with the word of God so that we can fight against this enemy. Amen. And so when you see a believer who's always feel like they're a failure, they don't know who they are because God don't create failures. 
I need to say that again. God does not create failures. So when you are just not you, or if you know, let me say you know somebody, I'm not going to talk to you, amen, that is always thinking that they're a failure, that they're a failure. Listen, you can rise from anything, anything that you face, you can rise. The Bible says, when I fall, I shall arise. You have to rise. You know, the failure is the one who stays down and then start licking their wounds saying, woe me. There's no woe me for, for a believer that God sent his son, came in the form of Jesus and died for us. Put on your armor. Amen. And it takes the word, the word, the word. When, when you're in the word, that word just fill your spirit, soul, and body and renew your mind. You got to renew your mind. Paradigm shift here. The word is the priority. Amen. But when you find a Christian who knows who they are in Christ, huh, that's the one you got to reckon with. Because what end up happening, it says, it doesn't matter how many arrows. How many arrows the enemy will shoot at them? How many words of condemnation the enemy will bring their way? How many false allegations the enemy will bring their way? No guilt, no thoughts will penetrate their hearts or lodge in their mind because the word responds. The word responds. That's, that's what that shield was. The word was responding. The word was fighting my battle. The word, the word, the word. Amen. And so if we don't have the shield of faith, not the shield of blessed plate of righteousness. I started thinking about the shield of faith. Listen, that blessed plate of righteousness, it rests on the loin belt. On a Roman soldier, the breastplate of righteousness, it rests on, on the loin belt. And I find that significant because without the loin belt, there's no righteousness. Without the word, there is no righteousness. And so it's befitting that with a soldier on his loin belt, which is the most important part of his weaponry because it holds the, the, the breastplate that protects his vital organs. Amen. So the word the word furnishes us with the righteousness that protects our vital organs from the onslaught of the enemy. So when you find somebody that, that knows who they are in Christ and knows that the righteousness of Christ, ha, huh, and they know that this breastplate is there to serve them, ha, huh, you know, they will have a positive attitude. Oh my goodness. When you see, they will see a problem and they will like, ah, oh, okay, you just came to shine my breastplate a little bit, ha. Huh. You're getting ready to bring some shine because if you're walking in this breastplate all the time, righteousness become greater. In other words, if you're communing with the word, if you're allowing the word to dwell richly in you, you begin to change. Amen. You begin to hear the way God word is being revealed to you. You're hearing from the spirit of God and you know what the word says. You begin to see through God's eyes and revelation, rhema, rhema, the word, the word. The word is health to our flesh. Ha. My God, that word brings healing, not just physically from sickness, but from mental illness, emotional illness. All these ills that people deal with, the word has the ability to correct it. That's why I'm saying that loin belt, which is loin belt of truth, which is the written word, is pivotal. Huh? It's the reservoir of what we need in order to function. You know, uh, uh, the Roman soldier know that without that belt, every part piece of the armor that's sustained by it will fall apart. Well, without the word, our life falls apart. Amen. I know you can attest to that. All right. So also when you find a believer that understand the importance of the breastplate of righteousness, they have confidence. Yeah, you, you have confidence in the word because it's the word of truth. And you know that God cannot and will not lie. Also, you walk in authority. A believer that understands and knows, knows, my God, you got to know this. It's not just reading it 
and saying, okay, I read it. That's what's going to be very important for you to be here when I teach on the sword of the spirit. Because it's going to tie the, the loin belt and the sword of the spirit, how they operate together. Amen. And so you, you have to walk in a Authority. When you know, when you have this breastplate on and you believe that it is the word of God, that you are the righteousness of God, that no matter what the enemy said, whether you are a failure, whether you are never going to make it, whether you are not important, you know, that rejection, all those things that the enemy used to bombard our mind and play mind games to us. Listen, the enemy is never going to be successful unless we cooperate with him. He'll never be able, he can't send somebody to just impact your mind. He's going to bombard your mind with words through people, uh, situations, circumstances, but only when we respond to it, has he been successful? Because remember, we talked about earlier that he's going to strike again and again and again and again. He's striking whichever way he can, family, friends, situations. You know, so much fear been released with what just happened in Orlando <laughs> at midnight. And I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> All right. So much is going on. However, the word of God is truth and God would not leave us or forsake us. This is the finest hour for the body of Christ. God is just calling us into alignment, to align with his word, to put on the armor, let the armor shine. I mean, when the Roman soldiers, when they would all go out to war and they had their breastplate on, it says that that thing will shine so much because of the rays of the sun that it will blind the enemy. It will blind the enemy. They didn't know who was coming. So when I was thinking about that today, I thought, wow. You know, when we have our breastplate of righteousness on and the glory of God, the anointing of God is upon us. I mean, that devil probably say, who's that? Is that Jesus or is that uh, uh, just another person? They won't be able to tell because of the glory. Amen. Because of the glory. I love that. All right. So it's important for us to understand. And now when you, a lot of time when people are walking, I used to get that a lot, you know, where when you believe the word and you are walking in authority, people believe you're cocky. They believe you're arrogant. They believe that you think you're better than anybody else. They just don't realize that you're just righteous. When you're standing with the word, that you're the righteousness of Christ. Amen. And so when we're talking about prayer and, and the uh, armor of God, listen, the armor of God, all it does is prepare us for prayer. That's why we have to be clothed right. Because if you're going into battle, there's going to be, you know, the offense of the enemy. Amen. And so we have to be clothed right. And that's why God gave it to us. But when you put this armor on, you know, because if you notice, this is what I wanted to say. That when you look at the pieces of the armor, it does not say prayer. Because prayer is not an armor. Prayer is the battle itself. It's the battle that we engage with the enemy. And then the word of God is the chief weapon that we use. Oh, that's the sword of the spirit. <laughs> no. All right. So... So it's important for us to understand that we have to be clothed for prayer. So many people go into prayer and they're not clothed. They don't understand. They, you know, we, we just are oblivious to this armor that God has given us. And so when we go into prayer, we're like, oh, the enemy is going to come when you pray. But then when he comes and you panic, you know, it's like, oh, you don't know who you are. I look at it as shine me up, devil. We're in for another one. Amen. And so you have to understand that in prayer, we have to be clothed. We have to be clothed with the armor of God. And then the word of God is the chief weapon that we're using. We're not using anything else but the we the weapon of the word of God. So you have to pray the word. So how do you pray the word? You got to know the word to pray the word. Pray the word. Pray the word. Amen. You have to take the word and pray the word. Amen. All right. I'm done. This is where I end today. I don't want to put anything else out there. So in recap, 
Make sure that you put on your armor, your breastplate of righteousness, every time you get ready for prayer. You put on all your armor, be clothed in righteousness, helmet of salvation. Let peace be shod on your feet. Amen. The shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and pray the word. Remember, in battle, the armor is your protection. Prayer is the actual battle itself. And the word is the chief weapon that we're using. And that's it. Amen. I pray that this little nugget blessed you. And go ahead and give the devil a black eye. Thank you. All right. Were you blessed? Say amen. I see that I finish on time. Close. Yay. <laughs> I'm working on this 30 minute thing. Amen. So I pray that it blessed you and you can go. I'm going to upload probably tonight and I'll upload um, the all of the ones that I have on my iPad and so that you can go back and review it. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, excited about this season. Keep praying for Orlando. That's not the will of God. Amen. It was the plan of the enemy for these people. I don't care what they are. That's not the will of God. And so we'll just continue to pray and expose. One, we need to pray to expose the plan of the enemy. Listen, we can release through prayer. One, we can foil the plan of the enemy. And two, there can we can allow God to use supernatural intelligence <laughs> to come forth to foil foil this this these assignment of the enemy amen we're after souls thank you dana we're after souls for the kingdom of god and so in the middle of this situation we're just going to believe god that souls will come forth from it in the name of jesus and pray for the families father we just let me just pray father we just pray for every family of every person father god that passed away or that was harmed god and and Father, we just thank you that you are raising up an army of believers, God, that will not stand and allow the enemy to have his way any longer. Father God, we break this assignment. We ask you, Father, to use us. Use us, Father, in prayer. Father God, for skillfulness. Use us, God, to be skillful in prayer in the name of Jesus. And Father, to birth God. Father God, strategies. Uh, expose everything of the enemy, Father God. Father, let Orlando not be the same, God. Father God, you're drawing your people back to you. Let this be, O oh God, a tool, Father God, that, Father, you can use to draw people back to you. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit from operating in the life of the people. But I do release the fear of God. Hey, Father, let the fear of God raise up in the heart of the people, God. And, Father, raise up pastors and teachers and ministers, God, who will not give your people intoxicating drugs but they'll give them the truth rhema of your word God and let it all be covered in your love the love of God hey father God let your love be shown God to these people to this world God Father, we are after souls for your kingdom, God. Father God, we just thank you that that's your heart, Father. And Father, we come against the spirit of terror. Father God, we bind the spirit of terror in the name of Jesus. And we send, God, this spirit back to the pit of hell where it come from. And Father, we take our authority that's been given us in the name of Jesus Christ. And your word says that we can decree a thing and it shall be established. So Father, we decree father hey an end to the spirit of terror in the name of Jesus we thank you for divine revelation and insight father to come forth now in the name of Jesus to the right people father God that father every plan every plot that's been in operation right now God be exposed God nothing is too hard for you we loose your angels God to hearken unto a 
for the voice of your word, God, to go right now in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says that you give your angels charge over us, God. Huh? So we thank you, Father. God, we release divine protection over your people, Father. God, let your peace rule and reign in our hearts, God. Father, we ask you for souls and souls and souls, God, in the name of Jesus. Say, we ask you for, God, let there be a revival in the heart of the people, not just in God and the unbeliever, but God, a revival in the heart of your people, Father, your church. Let them awaken out of stupor, God. Father God, and rise up, Father, with your word, hey, clothed in our armor, with your word in our mouth, God, hey, Father, Father God, and the love of God, let, let people not only see us, God, but see your love, your anointing, Father, upon our life. Let the anointing break, Father, every plan, God, of the enemy. Let it break, Father God, every stronghold in the life of your people, Father. I send your anointing, God, to pull your people out, God, of hiding, out of timidity, God, out of life experience. Father, that's crippled them in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Let the breakers anointing go forth, God. We will not sit idle, God, and let the enemy have a field day any longer. But we're taking our place, God. We're taking our place in prayer, Father. And we're allowing your spirit, Yamashatana, to reveal to us how to be skillful in prayer mandokore namanga njura bakaya father we thank you lord for your will father we superimpose your will over every plan of the enemy in the name of jesus christ of nazareth be it unto us god according to your word in jesus name we agree your word says where there is agreement there is power so we loose your dunamis work in power to be at work and expose 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 i speak it into the airways expose every plan god expose it in the name of jesus amen oh i almost went somewhere amen god bless you i love you i love you i love you if this scope yes thank you are you in agreement say agreement expose Every I'm asking for divine intelligence because God is able to 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 bring things forth. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. God bless you. Yes, agreement, agreement, agreement in the name of Jesus. Expose. That's right. Say that. Expose. Every plan of the enemy. Expose. Huh? We're in agreement today that every plan of the enemy is exposed in the name of Jesus. Huh? God bless you. Love you. Yes. Amen.